I'm making a series of videos that allows me to delve heavily into the Scream franchise to bring you guys some of the removed, deleted and alternate scenes that didn't manage to see the light of day. Most of this information is taken from original scripts, drafts and interviews with cast and crew who worked on the movies. So far, I've done six different videos showcasing some aspects of the movies that were changed before the movies hit theatres. To make sure you don't miss out on this awesome Scream trivia, be sure to hit subscribe and make sure you sign up for notifications so you don't miss a single update. Continuing from my video yesterday, we're going to take another look at the original draft for Scream 4 or more specifically, discussing the ending of the movie and how much different it was to the ending we eventually got. Now, repeating this for those that are checking this out for the first time, Scream 4 was originally written by Kevin Williamson and he left the project due to creative differences with the Weinstein brothers. Aaron Kruger, who wrote Scream 3, was then brought in to edit Kevin's original script for Scream 4. So, the version you're seeing in these videos is mostly before Aaron Kruger got his hands on them. I am quite open about how I do love a lot of aspects of Kevin's script, but then some aspects I prefer in the version we got. It's such a mixed bag with Scream 4. It may be common knowledge to some of you, but Kevin Williamson has been very vocal about his desire to create a new trilogy of Scream movies following Scream 3. He intended on 4 being the beginning of a new set of movies, which would follow a 5th and a 6th. He was so confident in this idea that he pitched it to Dimension Films, and they were quite happy with the idea. With all that in mind, it's safe to say the ending to Scream 4 was entirely different in Kevin's original draft, in the ending we eventually got. The climax takes place at Kirby Reed's house, which results in Sydney being left for dead by Jill Roberts, who is revealed to be Ghostface, which then sees the action heading to Woodsboro Hospital, where, after learning that Sydney is alive, Jill springs into action in a final attempt to kill her cousin. The plan doesn't work, however, and Jill is eventually killed. Now, in the original draft, the ending was completely different. I'm not sure which I prefer to be honest with you, but I'm going to read through it all now so you guys can form your own opinion. So, the setup was mostly the same. Jill had staged this whole crime scene. She'd stabbed Sydney as the police were on their way. The only difference with this draft was that Gail accompanied Dewey to Kirby's house alongside the police. So, without further ado, let's take a look at this original ending. As Jill lay there, hurt and bleeding, her face full of helpless innocence, the moment dissolves too. The aftermath, flashing squad cars and ambulances, the carnage is overwhelming. Police barricade the property, media gawk from a distance. On a stretcher in the back of an ambulance, Jill's wounds are being treated. Her shirt has been cut up at the backside, and little pieces of glass are being picked from her flesh. We reveal Dewey, standing alone, staring guiltily at the horror show, eyes full of tears. Gail. This wasn't your fault. Dewey doesn't speak. He's terribly shaken. Gail, at least Jill's okay. Dewey silently nods. Gail hugs him tighter. Jill sits in the back, weakly talking to Dewey, laying out her cover story. Charlie told me he and Trevor had planned this since last year. He said they were Billy and Stu all over again, except that this was going to be the reboot of all time. In the background, news reporters and press photographers shout, Jill, Jill, look over here. Jill timidly squints at Dewey, a helpless little girl face. What should I do, said Jill. I gotta warn you, for the rest of your life, they're never gonna leave you alone, replied Dewey. Jill. Maybe I'll just give them one picture so they'll go away. Wincing, hamming up the pain, Jill trembles and lifts herself to her feet with Dewey's assistance. Then, she steps around the edge of the ambulance. Flash, 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 flash. The yard blazes white with camera flashes, like Yankee Stadium lit up at night. Just then, an officer announces from inside the house, We have one alive, a woman! Dewey and Gail light up with this news. Dewey, you mean Sydney? Crash and burn. And that is it. This is how Kevin Williamson ended his version of Scream 4. So, one thing I will say is, this was intended to be a cliffhanger ending. 
which would have seen Sydney being alive in five and Jill attempting to carry on with the stardom she had gained. So in one sense it works for the most part, the only issue here is that it doesn't feel entirely like Scream. To end it on this kind of open ending, I suppose in one sense it tells the audience this story is going to continue, but at the same time, I feel like Scream benefits from being individual stories that are sort of locked within each movie. That being said, once again, I do like the idea of this story continuing. I think it could have been a very original direction for the movies to head in, especially with Jill being the survivor of the events and receiving all this fame for her ordeal. I can't help but think, if the movie did end like that, I'd be so hyped for a sequel way back in 2011 when the movie was released. Right, so what do you guys think? Which ending did you prefer? I get the feeling this might be mixed, I don't know, you know, let me know what you think. Thank you so much for tuning in guys, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and look out for more great Scream content on the way.